Okay, kids, I want to know, have any of you guys ever played the game Stop and Go? Do you guys know how it works? All right, here's what I'm going to do. I need you guys to line up right over there, okay? Everybody, line up across the line. Now, the way this game works, for those of you who don't know, is I'm going to turn my back to you, and then I'll say go. When I say go, you're going to walk towards me, okay? Okay. But if I turn around and say stop, you need to stop walking and hold still. Okay, if I catch you moving when I turn around, I'm going to point at you and I'll say your name and you need to go back to the starting line and start all over, okay? And the person who's going to win is the one who gets close to me, all right? You guys ready? Here we go. Ready? One, two, three, go. Stop. Oh, that guy saw you moving. You need to go back to the line. Okay, ready? Go. Whoop. Oh, Steven, back to the line. Okay, there's a few of you who are close. Go. Oh, good job. You got to me. Now, you guys, everybody come back and sit down. Now, to play the game right, you had to follow the rules in the one way that you could come to me, right, to win. Now, in our lesson today, we're going to hear about a couple people who had to choose whether or not they were going to follow God's one way to come to him or not. Would they do it? Well, our story begins at the very beginning in the Garden of Eden, where God created everything, a beautiful place, a garden where everything was wonderful. And he created the first two people there. Do you guys know what their names were? That's right. Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve. And the, he created them to have a special friendship with him. You see, while they were in the garden, they would walk and talk with God in the cool of the evening. That would have been so cool to be able to do. But one day, Adam and Eve, they believed some lies about God. You see, they thought they would do better and then made a choice to go their own way, which is sin. And when they chose to go their own way, sin entered the world and changed everything. It was no longer good or perfect. It was hard. Sin changed everything and was a, now a part of life, including would be a part of life for every person and everything in the world forever because of that decision. But God, even though they had chose to go their own way, God was very merciful and showed them mercy even though they didn't deserve it. He made a promise to them that he would one day send a savior who would shed his blood to take away the sin of the world. That was an amazing promise, but Adam and Eve still had to go out of the garden and into a world now full of sin. And it was hard. There was a lot of work they had to do, and because of sin, everything was hard now, but there were still some amazing, exciting things that happened. You see, one day, Adam and Eve welcomed their firstborn son. On the count of three, can you guys yell happy birthday? All right, ready? One, two, three. Happy birthday! They were so excited to meet their little baby boy. They may have looked at his little fingers and toes in wonder and amazement and his little squished face. They were so proud and loved their son, and they named him Cain. They loved him very much, but there was someone who loved Cain even more than Adam and Eve. You see, God loved Cain even more than Adam and Eve, and God loves you too. He loves you so much, and in fact, in God's word in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world. Now, that doesn't mean that God just loves the world, which he created. He made everything on the world. He even made everything above it in the stars and all the galaxies. He made all those too. But what this verse is saying is that he loves all the people. He loves you and me. And he loves us very much. In fact, he loves us in a way that no one else can. Because you see, God, he is perfect. He's holy. 
which means he never does anything wrong and he loves you more and in a perfect way because God is perfect. And we can trust what he says is true because God never lies because he is holy. We can trust what he says and it says that he loves us very much and we can believe it. Just like he loves Cain, he loves us, he loves Cain and Adam and Eve. But he loved him more than Adam and Eve did. But Adam and Eve loved Cain so much, but eventually they had a second son and they loved him too. And they named him Abel. And they got to watch Cain and Abel grow up and learn how to crawl, learn how to walk and talk and play and do all these amazing things that they had never seen before. They got to watch him with Cain and Abel. But as Cain and Abel grew up, they may have begun to ask questions like, what was it like in the garden? And Adam and Eve would have gotten to share how beautiful the Garden of Eden was and how perfect it was, how they didn't have to do much to get food. They had all the food they could ever want. Now, Cain and Abel had grown up, were growing up in this world filled with sin, and they knew that it wasn't that easy anymore. They may have watched their dad work hard in the field to grow them food to be able to eat. They may have even helped him take care of the field by pulling weeds. Can you guys all pretend to pull weeds? Good job. They knew that it was hard work. It wasn't that easy anymore. And they may have asked their parents, why? Why wasn't it like that? Why can't they go back to the garden? And then Adam and Eve would have had to share what happened how they chose to go their own way instead of God's way and sinned. And because of that sin, they were separated from God. They had to leave the garden. But then they would have been able to share about God's promise that he was going to send a savior who would shed his blood to take away the sin of the world and to share their hope and faith in that promise. Well, Cain and Abel They heard these, uh, their parents talk about it. They even watched them do things. But as they grew up, eventually it became time for them to help and choose what they would do for work. Well, Abel, the youngest, became a shepherd. See how he's got a little lamb there? He became a shepherd and began to take care of the sheep. He would take them to the best water, the best food. He would protect them from danger. He did everything he could for his sheep. He may have even had names for all of the little lambs and knew all of the sheep by names by heart. He was a shepherd. Now, Cain, the older brother, as you can see, he became a farmer where he would till up the ground and plant the seeds and make sure that those seeds got enough water and sun so that they could grow big and tall. He even had to pick the weeds just like they did when they were little with their father. But he worked hard to make sure that all these fruits and vegetables that he planted grew to where they could enjoy the food. And I'm sure that his family enjoyed a lot of fruits and vegetables that he grew. Now, through their time growing up, they watched their parents come and give offerings to God. You see, they would offer an animal to show that they had faith in God's promise that he would send a savior who would shed his blood to forgive sin. So, the time came where Cain and Abel would have to give their offering. Well, Cain, he went out into his field and gathered up the best fruits and vegetables that he could get, and he was going to bring that as an offering. And Abel, he went out into his flock and found a firstborn lamb that had nothing wrong with it. And that's what he was bringing as an offering. Because you see, God had laid out a way that he wanted them to come to him for forgiveness of sin. 
You see, back in the garden, he showed Adam and Eve what that was when he killed an animal to give them clothes. He gave, an animal gave its life. And that was to show that one day the Savior would do the same. So to show that they had faith in God's one way to come to him, they would offer an animal. And Abel was bringing an animal, a lamb, to God as an offering. He was showing his love for God and his faith in him by coming to God the way that God had asked him to. And if you have believed and received Jesus as your Savior, God wants you to show his love and your faith in him by the way you live. You see, in 1 Peter 3.18, it says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What that says is that as we grow, as we learn who Jesus is, we can live out our faith and show others that we love God and have faith in him by how we live and our knowledge of him. But how can we, how do we do that? Well, we can go to church and Sunday school where we can learn more about who God is and what God asks us to do. Other people like a pastor are there who can show us and teach us more about what God says of how we can follow him and show our love to him. Another way we can learn and what God asks us to do and how we can live is through his word, the Bible. In here, God shows and tells us things that he wants us to do for him. We learn that by reading it and spending time with him. But also we can pray and ask God to help us learn these things and to obey what God says we have to do. And one thing that he does ask us to do, and this is how we show our love for him, is by telling others about what God did for them when he sent his son to die on the cross to take the punishment for sin. And we can tell other people about that and show that we have faith. Hey, that reminds me, that's our word up, have faith. We can show that we have faith in God and that we love him by how we live. And Abel was showing that he had faith in God's promise and his one way to come to him by bringing the offering that he did. But they both brought offerings to God. But what would God do? Well, it tells us in Genesis chapter 4, verse 4b, what God did. It says, And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. What that's saying is that God accepted Abel's offering and rejected Cain's offering. Because we see, Abel showed his faith for God when he brought the offering the way that God said he was to do it. But Cain, Cain brought an offering that wasn't the way God said. He brought an offering that he thought was good enough. You see, he was trying to come to God his way instead of the way that God said to come. You see, he went his own way. And like Cain, we all go our own way. And when we go our own way and do what we want instead of going God's way, that's called sin. And sin is anything that we think, say, or do that displeases God. Can you guys do that with me? Sin is anything we think, say, or do that displeases him. And we've all sinned. In fact, in Romans 3.23, it tells us, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of us has sinned. We all go our own way. We all do things like lying or stealing or disobeying those in authority over us. We've all sinned. And no one had to teach us how to do those things. We were born with a want to to do those things. No one had to show us how to. We just knew because we're born with sin. And because we've all sinned and because God is perfect and just, he has to punish sin. And that punishment for sin is separation from him now and forever. And there is nothing that you or I can do to get rid of it. 
We can't come to God any way that we think we can. Only God has made one way for us to come. Just like Cain tried to come his own way to God and bring an offering that he thought was acceptable, even though God had said there was only one way to come to him. Now, when Cain saw that God had accepted his brother's offering, he became very angry. Does he look mad? Yeah, can you guys all show me your angry faces? Ooh, those are pretty mean looking. Cain became very angry and jealous of his brother. And God, he knew that Cain was angry, so he came to Cain. And he asked him a question. And we can see what God said to Cain in Genesis chapter 4. God asked Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? You see, God was telling Cain that if you do well, if you do what's right, if you come to me the way I asked, Will it not be accepted? You see, God was giving Cain a chance to come to God the way that God had asked. You see, God showed Cain that he could have forgiveness by doing and coming to him the one way that he said he could have that forgiveness. Even though Cain didn't deserve that opportunity, even though Cain didn't deserve it, God still showed him mercy and grace by giving him that opportunity to come to him his one way. And it was the only way that Cain could come to him. And just like God was giving Cain the opportunity to come to him his one way for forgiveness, God has only one way for us to have our sins forgiven too. And that one way is through his son, Jesus. You see, Jesus, God's perfect son, came to the earth and was born as a little baby, just like all of us were. We were all born as little babies, right? And then we all grew up just like Jesus did. He grew up, he was once your age, and then a teenager, and then an adult. But the difference between Jesus and all of us is that Jesus never sinned. He never lied or stole or disobeyed the people in authority over him. You see, he did everything perfect because he was God. He never sinned. And as he became an adult, he started going around teaching people about God and telling them about the promise that God had made for a Savior to come and that he was that Savior. And there were men who did not like that he was saying that. So they took him, they arrested him, and they nailed him to a cross where he bled and died. But Jesus, he was God. He could have stopped them from doing that, but he didn't. He willingly allowed himself to die on that cross because in Hebrews 9.22, it says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. You see, just like God, so many that long time ago with Adam and Eve said that a Savior would come and shed his blood. Jesus shed his blood so that your sins could be forgiven. Now, when Jesus died on that cross, they took him and buried him. But after three days, Jesus rose again from the dead and is alive today in heaven, ruling as king. And because of what Jesus did, we can have our sins forgiven. That's God's one way is for us to have faith in him and what he did. That's his one way that we can have our sins forgiven. And God had a way that Cain was able to come back to God through the way that God had said for him to. To show that he had faith in God's promise. But would Cain do it? Well, the Bible tells us that Cain actually stayed angry at his brother. He turned his back on God's promise and, his, and to not be forgiven. He was stubborn. He was angry. 
And he became more and more angry at Abel and more jealous of him. So one day when they were in a field alone, when nobody was watching, Cain did something terrible. You see, not only did Cain turn his back on God, but he also killed his brother Abel, thinking that no one saw him do it, but God did. And after that had happened, God came to Cain and asked him, where is your brother? It tells us here in Genesis chapter 4, And then Cain, in answer to God, he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? You see, Cain still thought he had gotten away with it, that no one knew what he had done. But God knew. That's why he asked Cain, where is your brother? He wanted Cain to, to come and confess what he had done, to tell him about that he had sinned. He offered Cain another chance for forgiveness, even though Cain did not deserve it at all. God showed mercy and grace to Cain again by giving him the chance to come to him and tell him what he had done and confess his sin. But Cain was stubborn. And didn't do it. That's why he said what he said when he said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? So God, knowing what Cain had done, punished Cain because of his sin. He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground. When you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. You see, because of Cain's sin, it impacted his life. He was no longer able to be where his parents were. He was no longer able to be near God. God was saying when he told him this punishment that Cain would have to work really hard to grow food. And even though he would work and work and work, only a little bit would come up. No matter how hard he worked. And then Cain said this, my punishment is greater than I can bear. He was afraid that Not only was this going to be too hard, but when people found him who knew what he did, that they would kill him. But God, again, showed Cain mercy. He put a mark on Cain so that people would know, but that they wouldn't harm him again because of what he did. Even though Cain didn't deserve that, God did. Show him grace and mercy again. And then comes the saddest words in this passage of the Bible that Cain left the presence of the Lord. He had to leave. Because of sin, because he was stubborn and didn't come to God his one way, Cain was separated from him. You see, God had one way for Cain to seek forgiveness, to be able to come to him. And Cain chose to go his own way. But what about you? See, God has one way for us to come to him to be able to have our sins forgiven, and that's through his son. And he tells us how that works. He says in John 1, 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. What this verse is saying is that to all, to everyone who did receive him, and that him is talking about his son, Jesus. 
And to come to God this one way, we have to first believe and we have to receive. What that verse says when it means believe means that you have to put your trust in what is true. You have to trust with your whole heart that what God says about himself and about us and about his son is all true and that it is the only way that we can have our sins forgiven. And then we have to receive it. We have to take it and make it our own. It means you have to ask God to be your savior. Now I want everyone to bow your heads and close your eyes. If you're here today and you have never believed and received Jesus as your savior, no one looking around, everybody keep your eyes closed. If you have never believed and received Jesus as your savior, and you want to learn more about what that means or how to do that, I want you to show me by raising your hand. All right, everybody can put their hands down. I want everybody to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for this time to be able to come and learn about your one way about what you did so that we could have our sins forgiven. And God, I just pray now that you would be with us. Help us to learn more about your one way to come to you and have fun while we learn about it. God, I just ask these things in your son's name. Amen. All right, everybody look up at me. Okay, if you raised your hand because you want to learn more about what it means to believe or receive Jesus, or you have questions about how to do that, I want you to meet me back there in the corner by that tree, and I will show you from God's word how you can believe and receive Jesus as your Savior.